Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sechta Shabbos, DAF, Kuf, Dalid is divided neatly in half by a Mishnah, which begins at the top of the second Amud. So the first Amud is discussing the letters of the Aleph base. So first of all, the Gemara is trying to figure out whether letters that have a uh, middle of the word version and an ending version are those interchangeable can you if you wrote one instead of the other you wrote a middle version at the end or an end version in the middle is that okay can you switch them after the Gemara figures that out the Gemara is going to launch into a list of derushas about the letters of the alphabet themselves first of all we will discuss each letter on its own and then we'll do the atvash where you have a drusha where you take the first and the last letter of the alphabet, and then the second, and the second to last, and so on. And then we'll have two more similar versions of Atbash, uh, one with a nine-letter skip, and one with a thirteen-letter skip, and the Gemara will learn many Ramazim about Klal Yisrael from these things. So first of all, the Gemara has just brought a proof that you can exchange a ending letter. You can write it, you are allowed to write a middle letter instead. What was the proof? So we saw that in the listing of the Kabbanas for the Antiv of Sukkis, we have an extra Mem, Yud, Mem, and the Gemara says a drasha that that's Mayim, which refers to the fact that they poured water on the Mizbeach for Sukkis. Now, all, the two Mems were both closing Mems, they were both end Mems. So how did we have such a drasha? We need a middle Mem for that. So the Gemara says, obviously you're allowed to use a middle Mem instead of an end Mem, and the Gemara says it was logical to say that if you're allowed to use a middle instead of an end, you're allowed to use an end instead of a middle. Why not? Now, in a mem, the difference between the middle and the end is that the ending letter is closed and the middle one is open. The other end letters are straight and bent, meaning the middle letters are kind of folded. There's a long leg that's folded, and if it's at the end of the word, the leg is tall and straight. So the Gemara says now, no, just because you're allowed to use an ending letter instead of a middle letter doesn't mean you can do the opposite. Why? Because the end letter of, at least for Mem, is holier and it's more chashuv, it's on a higher level than the middle letter. Why is that? Because the end letter Mem was on the Luchas. And the closed, the open Mem, which is the middle of the word, was not on the Luchas. And therefore, it's on a lower level, and you can't change for a lower letter, you can change for a higher letter. How do we know that it was on the Luchos? So the Gemara says, because you have a Gemara that says that the Mem and the Samach that are in the Luchos were standing there as if by miracle. Why is that? Not as if a miracle, it was a miracle. Why is that? Because they are completely closed all the way around. And the letters of the Luchos were carved through and through. They went all the way through. The Gemara says you could read them on the other side. If it said Nevov on one side, you could say Buban on the other side. If it said Bahar on one side, you could see Vahar on the other other side. If it said Surah on one side, you could see Varas on the other side. So you could read straight through. That being the case, how did the middle space of the closed Mem and of the Sama, how did that stand? It should have fallen out. So Mar says that was a miracle. So therefore, you clearly see that the letter Mem, which was on the Luchos, was a closed Mem. Now, any letter which was not on the Luchos is on a lower level. The Gemara brings from Rav Chibar Abba that Menatz Pecha, Menatz Pecha are the letters Mem, Nud, Sadi, Fei, Chaf. Well, those are all the letters which have a uh, end version and a closed version, an end version and a middle of the word version, all those letters were added by the Nevi'im. Now, we thought all along that the ones that were added were the, were the end of the letter versions. But the Gemara now says, well, the Mem that was in the Luchas was obviously the closed one, because you said it was standing as a miracle. That means that the Mem that was added by the Nevi'im was the open one, it was the middle of the word one. So the Gemara says, so therefore you see that, that uh, the open Mem was not on the Luchas, and uh, therefore it's on a lower level, and you can't switch to that. Now the Gemara says, hold on a second, you're telling me the Nevi'im added letters? What are you talking about? The Torah says, Eilah HaMitzvah, and we know that that means these are the mitzvahs, you're not allowed to add anything. How can you tell me that a Navi added anything? So Gemara says, no, it was all from Hashem, but Hashem gave us the letters, but he didn't tell us which ones were in the middle of the word, which ones were at the end of the word, and then Nevi'im came and clarified that. So the Gemara says, no, that's no good, because <laughs> that's still adding. So Gemara says, Okay, what really happened was like this. This is very interesting. They were given, Hashem told us the letters, and he told us which ones go where, which ones are in the middle of the word, which ones are at the end, but we forgot. Can you believe that? Call yourself, forgot which letters are which. We didn't know Aleph base. And along came the Nevi'im, and they clarified for us which ones go in the middle, and which ones go at the end. 
Okay, now the Gemara moves on to the rush. So we're going to first have a drasha for each letter of the Aleph Bays and their position in the order of Aleph Bays. So you have to visualize the Aleph Bays written out in front of you in a row. So the Gemara says that uh, their abundance said Yeshua ben Levi, a bunch of children, just came to the Bismedish and they told us amazing things that even the days of Yeshua ben Nun they did not know. Aleph Bay stands for Aleph Bina, meaning learn wisdom, learn a Torah. Gimel Dalid stands for Gimel Talim, which means do kindness to the poor. Now, if you notice, the Gimel has a leg stretched towards the Dalid. Why is that? Because he's running after the Dalid, because the one who wants to do kindness is chasing after the poor man who needs the kindness. Now, why is the the Dalit itself is kind of stretched a little towards the Gimel. Its leg is leaning towards the Gimel slightly. In order to tell you that the poor person shouldn't make it too hard for the rich man to find him. He should be findable. He, he shouldn't run away too fast. Now, the Dalit is not facing the Gimel. Its open end is facing away from the Gimel. Why is that? Because the Chesed should be given when the poor person isn't seeing in order that you don't embarrass him, it should be done in secret. Okay, next. Hey Vav. Hey Vav is one of Hashem's names. Like it says, Aniva Hoyashina. Zayin Ches Tes Yud Chof Lamid stands for Zan, Chan, Toiv, Yerusha, Keser, Lo'ilam Haba. It means to tell you that if you'll do all these kindness things, you'll learn and you'll do kindness with the poor in this manner. Hashem will be Zan, He will support you. Chan, He will be gracious to you. Meitiv, He will be good to you. Yerusha, He'll give you an inheritance. And He will tie for you a keser, a crown, la'ilam haba, for all future generations. Okay, then we have Mem. Mem has a closed version and open version. What's the reason? In order to tell you that there are some things which you are allowed to learn about and some things which you are not allowed to. Some you are allowed to speak about, some which you are not allowed to, such as Maisa Merkava, the description of the chariots of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you should not be uh, discussing those in public. Now the Nun, there is a uh, straight Nun, that's the end letter, and then there's the bent Nun. Why do you have those? That's because sometimes somebody is, uh, is um, if you have someone who is humble in this world, um, then when he gets to the next role at the end, the end nun, he will be straight and tall and proud. Humility is a uh, valuable trait to have in this world. Okay, next thing, the Umar says we have Samachayim that stands for either Simochanim, support the poor, or Simonin Asei B'Torah, meaning you should make signs, mnemonics to, to remember the Torah that you learned. Okay, then we have Pay and fe, and again there's a straight version, and then there and there's a, a, the bent version. What's the reason? It stands for the mouth. Sometimes you have a closed mouth. Sometimes you have an open mouth. Um, that means Rashi explains sometimes you should be traveling and teaching and spreading your word around, but sometimes you should be uh, withdrawn and learning on your own, and those are times when other people are teaching and they are more talented than you are. Okay, the letter Tzadi also has a bent and a straight version. That's to teach you that a Tzadi who is bent and humble in this world will be tall and straight in the next world. The Gemara says that's the same as what you said for the Nun. The Gemara says, yeah, we needed to learn that twice. You need to be bent and bent. You have to be humble and humble. Um, from there we learn that the Torah was given in humility uh, in humbleness, with trembling and fear and humility. Okay, next. Kuf. Kuf stands for Kadosh. Resh stands for Russia. Kadosh, Russia. Well, we have a lot of things here. First of all, why is the Resh of the Russia facing away from the Kuf? The Umar says, because the Kadosh Baruch who is Kadosh, says, I don't want to look at the Russia. Why does the crown on the Kuf lean towards the Resh in front of him? That's the uh, the crown on the front leading edge of the kuf, the tag because Hashem says that if the reish, if the rush is in front of me, will turn around and do tshuva, I will give him a crown just like I have. And why is the leg of the kuf hanging in the air? Why does it not reach all the way to the top of the kuf? Because if the rush will come back and want to do tshuva, there will be holes for him, there will be room for him, there will be doors for him to enter on the side, on the bottom, wherever he wants to get through. Now, says reish lakish, we see this idea, a similar idea, from the Pasuk in Mishli that says, For those who are scoffers 
he'll scoff. And for those who are humble, he will show favor. What does that mean? If somebody's a let's, he's a scoffer. Okay, somebody wants to do the wrong thing. We allow him to. We don't help him. We don't stand in his way. He wants to do it. He'll have the opportunity. However, somebody who wants to purify himself, wants to help, so then we assist him. Just like the kuf opens space and allows, creates a ladder and allows the reish to come back and do tshuva. Okay, then we have shin and tough. Shin stands for sheker. Tough is the last letter of MS. And we have a few things here. First of all, Sheker is made of three letters that are one right after the other in the Aleph base. Reish, Shin, uh, Kuf, Reish, Shin. Why is that? Because uh, Sheker is unfortunately found all over the place. Wherever you go, you bump into falsehood. Sheker stands for is falsehood. Now, why is MS? Why is that spread out? It's the first letter of the alphabet, the last letter of the alphabet, and the middle letter of the alphabet. Because uh, truth is hard to find. you got to travel all the way through the alphabet to find a little bit of it. Now, if you notice, another thing, the letters of Sheker, Falsehood, Shin, Kaf, and Resh, all are balanced on a point. There's only a point of the letter that reaches the line that they're standing on. Because it's not going to stand. It won't stand for a long time. On the other hand, MS, the letters Aleph, Mem, and Saf are all firmly flat or have two legs, and therefore they're easy to balance, because truth will stand. The truth is the only thing that is going to last. Okay, now the Gemara moves on to the Atbash Drasha. That's Aleph together with Taf, Bez with Shin, Gimel with Reish, and so on and so forth. And the Gemara explains them as words. So the Gemara says, first of all, we're going to talk about Rishayim. And these are all questions. Atbash, Oisi Ta'ev. You rejected me, Asavale. Do you think I am going to uh, desire to be with you? No, I'm not going to. Beis Shin, B, Loi Choshak, Shmi Yochel Olev. If he didn't desire me, you think my name is going to fall on him? It won't. Gimel Reish, Gufoy Time, he impurified his body. Arachim Olev, Reish Arachim Olev. No, I'm not going to have mercy on him. Dal it kof dal soisai noal. He locked my doors, locked my doors. Lock the doors of the shul, yeah? Locked it up. Karnov, Lea you think I'm not going to chop off his horns? I will. Okay, that's all about Rishayim. From now on, from henceforth, we're going to do Atbash in Midas Tzadikim, about the holy people, and this goes a lot further. Atbash is Ataboish. If you will be humble, so then Gimel Reish, Dalit Kof, so Gur Baduk. Gur Baduk means you'll be closely bound and tied under the heavenly throne. The Kisei Hak. Kavoid. Hey is with Tzadi, Vav is with Fei. Here, um, and from here until the end of these Drashas, Hey will be interpreted as a Ches, and Ches will be interpreted as a Hey. So Hey Tzadi is Chatzitza, Vav Fei is Havi Bincha Laaf. Havi Bincha Laaf. So Chatzitza, Havi Bincha Laaf will be a wall between you and the anger. Zayin with Ayin, Ches Samach, Tes Nun is Mizazeya Mina Satan. Hey, ches is hey, ches samach tes nun, ches ton is hasatan. So uh, you you do not have to fear from the satan, meaning if you're going to be a tzaddik. So gor boduk, you'll be stuck to the kisei hakavoy, there'll be a wall between you and the anger, and you don't have to fear anything from the satan, from the evil forces. Next we have yud mem and kof lamin, that's the end of the adbash, what is that? Yam kol, yam kol is a sea for all, what is that? Gemara says that the angel, the Sar of Gehenna, says to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that my Gehenna is called Yam. It's the ocean for everybody. Everybody belongs there. So Hashem answers him, and now we get a new level of drushes of Advash, and that's that each letter is joined with a letter nine letters ahead. So Aleph is with Ches, Samach, uh, Ches is with Samach. Next we have the set of Beis, Tes, Ayin, right? So again, we have Aleph, Hamas, we have Aleph, Ches, Samach. Then base test ayin. That's the base is after the aleph. The test is after the ches, and the ayin is after the samach. And then gimel yod fei. So how does this Joshua work? So Hashem answers the satan, and he says, "Achas b'ta gif ani chas aleya mipne shabatu begif." I will have mercy upon them. Achas ani chas b'ta because they kicked begif from niof. They threw out uh, the sin of. Adultery, therefore, I have mercy on Kaiso. The next set is Dalid Chav Tzadi, which stands for Dachim Heim, Kainim Heim, Tzadikim Heim. They are pure, they are correct, and they are holy. Therefore, Gehenim is not going to get Kaiso.
Next is Hey Lamid Kuf. That's again Hey is interchangeable with Ches, so it's Chelak. You don't have a portion with them. Hashem says Gehenim, not for you. You don't have anything to do with them. Next is Memre Zayin. Vav Mem Reish, Zayin Nun, Shin, and Saf. So we read it all as one. Vamar Zon Shas. So Gehenim says, uh, Hashem, Mori Znini, Mizara, Yishol Shais. My master, feed me. I am hungry. Feed me from the offspring of Shais. So I'll say back to him, and here we have a new set of Atbash, where we skip ahead 13 letters. Aleph goes with Lamed, Bez with Mem, Gimel with Nun, and Dal with Samach. So I'll say to him, um, Lehechon, on my way, I'll say to him, Lehechon, Oilichen, Aleph, Lamed, Oilichen, where am I going to send them? Ligan Hadas, to a garden of Hadasim. Then we have, Hey, Ayin, Vafei, which is, Gehenim says to Hashem, Rebbeinu Shalayim, Hey, Ayin, Vafei, Oye, Fanechi, I'm tired, I'm hungry, you're not feeding me with, Kal uh, Yisrael, Zion, Ayin, Zion, Sadi is next, Chav, Kav, so they'll, he'll say, Zion Ayin, uh, Zion Tzadi Chaf, Chaf is Zari Shel Yitzchak. They're, they're descendants of Yitzchak. It's not for you. But, Taf Reish Yod Shin Chaf Saf. Don't worry. Tar, wait. Yesh, I have. Chaf Tav, Kitos, Kitos. I have many groups of Oivdev Oidezar. I'm going to feed you with that. And now we get to the Mishnah. The Mishnah discusses the halachas of writing in detail. And we're going to have to discuss what kind of ink you're using and what you're writing on and how exactly you're writing it. So the mission has two halves. The first half discusses situations in which you are violating against a deraisa, and therefore you're, yeah, you would have to bring a carbon if you did a gig. And the second half is where you have isur derabanan, some of which are actually a machlokas. Now, in order to have an isur deraisa, you need a few factors. First of all, it has to be an ink and a material which is going to last. It cannot be something which is going to erase itself in a while. It also has to be written with the proper intent. It has to be two letters that are written together so that you can read them at once. So let's see the cases the Mishnah brings. First of all, we see where the rice. It says that it has to be that you wrote two letters without realizing that it was an Esr de Araisa in between in order for you to be Chayv a carbon. Okay, that halach we've seen many times. Now, the type of ink you could use. You could use regular ink. You could use something called Sam, which is a general word for all chemicals. A Sikra, the Gemara will explain what that is. Kumus is made from tree sap, kankantum is made, is a type of kumus. Then anything which you can make a mark with really counts. Now, what about surfaces? So let's say you make it on two walls of a corner. So as long as you can read them together in one shot, that's called uh, enough to be considered an isodice of writing. If you wrote it in a uh, store owner's notebook, as long as you could see them together, you can put the pages together and you can read it. So that would be considered to be an isodice of writing. Now, if you write on your flesh, that's also Nesedaraisa. If you scratch letters into your flesh, that's a Machokis. River Lezard says it's Nesedaraisa, and the Chalm says it's Nesedarabonin. Now come the Yisrael Derabonin. You wrote with juice, uh, any type of other liquids you wrote in the dust. Either that means you made ink out of the dust, or you wrote with your finger tracing lines in the dust. Whether it's road dust or writer's uh, material that creates a dust. Anything which doesn't last is only going to be Nisad Rabbanan. If you did it with a shinoi, you wrote with your hand upside down, or you wrote holding the pen in your foot, your mouth, or your elbow, all the things are only Nisad Raisa. If you wrote one letter next to an existing set of letters to complete the word, that's an Nisad Rabbanan. Sorry, these are all Nisad the Rabbanan. If you wrote on. Um, Top of another letter, it's an Isra Derabonan. If you intended the wrong thing, you went, you wanted to write a Ches, but the pen skipped while you were writing the roof of the Ches, and you ended up with two Zions, which is two letters. It's also only an Isra Derabonan. Uh, you wrote on two walls of a house, which you can't read it in one glance. Isra Derabonan. You wrote on two columns in a scroll, which you can't read them together. Can't bring them together, can't read them together. Isra Derabonan. Now we have a case in which an interesting machlokas. You wrote one letter, but it was a uh, abbreviation for a longer word. The Gemara now proceeds to explain the words of the Mishnah line by line. So first of all, the inks that were listed, we had dioy. Dioy is ink. Sam is a general name for chemicals. The Gemara defines it as something called orpiment, which sounds like pigment of some sort. Then we have Sikra, which Rav Baruch Hanna says is Sikarta, which is a red ink that people use to paint their shutters. 
Kumus, Kumo, Kankantum. The Gemara says this is uh, ink made from tree sap. And Rabbi Rochana says Kankantum is a copper derived chemical which is made from copper powder and coal. Okay, next the Gemara says anything which makes a mark. The Mishnah had said anything which makes a mark. The Gemara says, what does that include? The Gemara says, that's to include Meitaria. Rashi says, it's a kind of a fruit. Uh, to include Afza, which is a chemical Rashi defines in French. And Rav Chia says, it includes if you wrote by using a piece of lead and making marks, or using a coal and making marks, or using a type of ink, again, made from copper. Okay. Now the Gemara says the Mishnah had said somebody who makes a scratch mark on his skin is not an Iser Darais to Machlekes. So the Gemara says it's a Machlekes of Rabbi and the Chachamim. The Rabbi Elazar said to the Chachamim, I bring you a proof because there was a person by the name of Ben Stada who was able to export witchcraft methods from Mitzrayim and he left Mitzrayim by writing it on his skin with scratches. So you see, it's a valid form of writing. So they said, don't bring a proof from Ben Stada. He was a shaita. He was not a functional human being. And therefore, you can't bring a proof from him. But just because he did it doesn't mean it's a normal thing to do. Okay, now we said in the mission that if you write one letter next to existing letters, so that's an Esther Abana. The says this doesn't fit with Rabbi Eliezer, who says if you weave one thread onto existing cloth, so that's, that is an Iser Deiraisa. You have to weave two threads to Bichayev here. You have to write two letters to Bichayev. You add one to an existing one. Rabbi Yassar says Yichayev. He would also say that in the case of adding an existing, of adding a letter to an existing letter. Now he said if you write over letters, so it's also only an Iser Deiraisa. where it says it's not like Rabbi Huda. Because we have the following Bryce. The Bryce says, what happens if somebody was supposed to write the Shem Hashem? He was writing a Sefer and he was supposed to write the Shem Hashem which is Yud Kei Vav Kei. And he intended, instead of writing Shem Hashem, to write Yehuda, but he forgot to write the Dal, and he ended up writing the Shem Hashem by mistake, but without Kavana. So in order to write the Shem Hashem, you have to have intent to write the Shem Hashem. Here, he didn't have intent. So what do you do? So Yehuda says, you just write over it, you trace over the letters, and that's called writing. And that's why it doesn't fit with this mission, who says that that wouldn't be called writing Midere. So the Chachamim, However, say that's not a normal way to write, and that it wouldn't be good enough for the Shem Hashem. It also wouldn't be good enough in this situation over here. Okay, next thing is if you write well, the last letter of a Sefer. You finish entire Sefer by writing the last letter. So if a Bryce that says, that's an Iser right? So also if you do the last thread, you weave the last thread onto a cloth, that's an Iser Deraiz. So then says, this is Rabbi Eliezer. This has to be. Rabbi Yaz, who says if you add on one final thing, if you add on one thing to an existing thing, it's an Isidai Raisa. So there's no could even be the Rabbanan who argue on him, because here you're finishing off the Sefer, you're finishing off the cloth. So finishing it off, the Rabbanan would agree is an Isidai Raisa, as opposed to just adding one on, but not finishing it off, the Rabbanan would say he's not an Isidai Raisa. Okay, now what about if you wrote two letters far apart that you can't see them? So Rabbi says you wrote one letter in Tveri and one letter in Tzipayri, it's an Isidai Raisa. Because all you have to do is bring the letters together, and then you could read them. And this is what I mean. In the Mishnah, we saw that if you write on two walls of the house that are far apart, or two pages of a notebook, or two columns of a scroll that are far apart, and you can't read them together, that's not an Isidar So how does this work? So Gemara says, no. Here, what happened was is that he wrote on a piece of paper in Tiberia, and then he traveled to Tiberia, and he wrote over there on a different piece of paper. So all you have to do is put the papers together, and you can read it. Not any significant action preventing you from reading them together. As opposed to if you write on the walls of the house, or on the columns of the scroll, you have to cut and chop to be able to read them together. Okay, next thing Amara says, if somebody adjusts a letter, it's an Iser Deraisa. And says, what do you mean? If he writes one letter, it's not an Iser Deraisa. How could adjusting a letter be an Iser Deraisa? So Gemara offers a couple of answers. And says, first of all, he adjusted a letter and made two letters, like he had a ches, and he scratched out the middle of the roof, and he made two zions. Rav says, it's talking about where he adjusted the last letter in a safer and he finished off the safer like that. Like he had... A Dalid, where there was supposed to be a Reish, he adjusted it and finished off the Sefer, so that would then be an Isidar right? So, now the Gemara says, what if somebody intended to write one letter and he ended up writing two? So we have a Bryce that says that's Isidar Raisa. The Gemara says, what do I mean? Our mission said that's an Isidar Bun, where he intended to write a Ches and said he wrote two Zions. 
Why is this not a problem? In the case of the Zions, you still have to put the crowns on top, so it's not finished, so it's not an Esther Deraisa. In our case, however, it is an Esther Deraisa because the letters are complete. That takes us to the end of Daf Kof. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland Shul and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.